Hi coaches, uh, Josh and Brett here. And today's uh, kind of an exciting video for us to make because we are getting ready to kick off network training for the 2016-17 season. We have some high school teams, elite teams beginning this week. And Josh and I wanted to take a moment today and just share with you um, some of the things that will continue in network training this year, but also some new things that you'll be seeing. So I want to first start off by, uh, you know, why network training and where did, you know, what, what's the goals of, of network training? Well, first and foremost, the, the extreme wants to encourage team development for the team sports that we play. So the training, the extreme network training is done in the team environment. The, the second component is to make sure that consistency shows up across the entire extreme organization. So extreme network provides us an opportunity to be consistent in our development. What extreme network training also does for, for us coaches is it provides us an opportunity to grow and improve. So we have the goals of, of bringing the knowledge into the team practice setting and allowing our coaches to get smarter about the game and grow in the knowledge that they have about the game. On the other side, we have player development. Extreme network training helps our players improve on their techniques and the tactics that are needed in baseball and softball. There are some responsibilities that we have during network training. And as coaches, team coaches, we really need to help take this information that is provided in network training and bring it out into your team development. Take that information and infuse it into your team practices, into your conversations, into the future uh, development opportunities that you may have with your team. One hour of network training alone doesn't, doesn't, doesn't provide all the necessary development needed for teams to grow. So coaches, continue to take the information that's provided during network training and build it into your team culture so that it shows up over and over again to build that muscle memory that's needed from the network training. The other thing we wanna talk about is the expectations we have for our coaches during network training. Um, first and foremost, we want all of our staff members to be present. Um, our assistant coaches, our head coaches, we want all of you to be present as best you possibly can during our network training. Um, the other thing that we are going to be rolling out this year a little bit differently than last year is what we call a curriculum grid. And that curriculum grid is going to give our coaches uh, a little bit of a heads up and a direction in which our network training is going to go on not only the skill side but also on the velocity side. Uh, that being said, we want to ask our coaches to please review that curriculum grid prior to our training sessions um, that evening. In addition to that, all of our coaches, um, with, with having that curriculum grid in place, um, all of our coaches are going to be better equipped to be able to be more engaged and be a direct support to our network trainers. Um, we want you involved. Um, I think that helps to create buy-in from our athletes as well as they, when they see their coaches fully involved in all pieces of network training. And then lastly, um, we want to create a unified front. We want our coaches to be speaking the same language as our network trainers on the skill side and the velocity side. So we want to create that unified front um, as, a, as a key piece to what we do on the network training side. Josh was just mentioning some of the expectations that we have for team coaches and the engagement that we would like to see during the network training hours. Well, to do that this year, one of the discussions has been around providing more uh, support and tools to the coaches. And the first thing that you, you will see uh, this year is the curriculum grid that Josh alluded to earlier. Let's go through an example of what that might look like. So um, here's just a sheet that uh, has one completed skill, uh, but we've went ahead and wrote on the whiteboard here uh, an example for to, to walk through. The grid's gonna have two different styles. The first style will be around a skill, hitting, pitching, catching, defense. The other one will be around our velocity and our strength and conditioning. Let's look at the skill. Here is an example of a hitting component. There's four categories that will make up our network training hour. 
some of the hour will have a physical component. We need to see a physical improvement to make sure that the skill improvement is available. Then the next component will have a technical, a strong teaching side. We will want to see that, uh, that technical side improve to allow for it to show up in the game. That's where we move into the tactical component. Tactical is how do I take this technique and make it show up? That's the great thing of network training. Network training doesn't just stop here at the technique in the cage, but it actually brings it out into the field so that we can see that show up in live game situations. And then finally, we're gonna end with some competition, a game, a fun little competitive environment. That's gonna allow us to build this muscle memory and have it show up at the very end of our training. The curriculum grid is important to allow the coaches to see how the hour is gonna be structured, but also to bring consistency to the network trainers. So as Brett talked about the skill side, um, working with the grid, we have a little bit of a different look for the strength and conditioning side. Um, on the velocity side of things, you're gonna see these columns very similar to what the skill side has, but just a few different names. Um, and that's just gonna create some clarity for everyone. Um, so the first thing is our focus side that would follow under the physical component. And so what, we're, what our focus may be, um, that focus can change sometimes week by week, but more than likely what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a, a block of time, anywhere from two to four weeks, that there's gonna be a general focus that we're working towards. Um, in addition to that, you're going to see a teaching or a knowledge development time. Um, and this is time that we can actually teach the exercise techniques. This is something that we didn't get a ton of time with last year um, that we want to bring in uh, so that not only our athletes can learn the movements more effectively, but also our coaches can learn them um, so, for, so they can later implement them into practice schedules. Um, in addition to that then, after we go through the knowledge development time would be a strength or a skill development time. On the elite level side or more of our, high, our older high school athletes, that's gonna turn into a, a real, really a true strength development time. Uh, but for our younger athletes, more than likely that's gonna be more skill development. So they might be using the movement, uh, but they're not overloading it and truly developing strength, but more the skill of the movement. And then lastly, you're gonna see a conditioning or an athleticism piece. Um, that piece is met, uh, meant for development of the energy systems that we're trying to accomplish during that session. So sometimes it could be aerobic development, sometimes it might be speed development, uh, sometimes it might be a team or a partner workout. So you'll see that kind of change up as we go through each workout. This year, as you can see, uh, one of our goals is to increase the engagement uh, of the team coaches during the network training hour. And the curriculum grid will help us with that. We also have a couple other tools that we'll be showing up. Uh, one is going to be a coaching tips video, and that video will um, be available to the network trainer and the team coaches at the beginning of network training hours. This will set a skill for us, so we can watch a video, learn the talking points, the players and athletes can learn those points as well. This will also bring consistency throughout our network training. So we might have a skill leader who works with a certain portion of our teams, but we have other network trainers that can share this video and share the languaging to our teams as well. So we're excited that the coaching tips video will be another tool to increase the engagement of everyone inside of the network training hour. Not only with the coaching tips videos, but also we're going to be standardizing some things. One of the most important things we're going to standardize is a standardized warm-up um, for all of our teams. This warm-up would be done um, prior to network training as well as in practice setting as, uh, for our coaches and our athletes. Um, so that's something that will start to roll out this fall. Um, and, and we're building off of what we had. Some, some of you may remember some stuff developed last year. But we're going to continue to build that and make that flow effectively into your practices. In conclusion, Josh and I are really excited about another year of network training starting this season, this fall. And we hope that your teams and your coaches have a great experience in getting more knowledgeable, in learning the game, and really collaborating with your network trainers to uh, help take your team to, to the next level. A reminder for us all, this is a, a five-year vision. We launched network training last year as, as a way to, of course, help our players and coaches learn more about the game, but we want to create a movement over the next few years. We want everlasting change. Everlasting change won't come in just that one hour session. It's going to come from us coaches getting more knowledgeable about the game, learning more effective ways to communicate it to our athletes, and, and, and ingraining that everlasting change inside of them. 
fast forward that five years, 10 years, and we start to see a movement in baseball and softball in our community. More athletes competing uh, more effectively, um, stronger, faster. We start to see those skills become easier to do. That's the goal of network training. And this entering into year two, uh, we're excited to continue to progress that forward. On behalf of Josh and myself, coaches, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for being a big part of, of network training. And if you ever have questions on the curriculum, the programming, or there's anything that Josh and I can help with, just reach out. Extreme pride to you all, and, and we'll see you in the field.